it's good to welcome you, and I want to announce this morning that we will begin uh, today a new sermon series that will extend uh, into 2010. We're going to start the book of Revelation today. Last year, uh, we studied at the beginning of the year the book of Genesis, and we moved through that book, and uh, this year uh, we'll begin the book of Revelation, and we'll study this book as, as many Sundays as we have, Lord willing, till we work through it. And then I'll commit to you in the years ahead, uh, we'll work on all the other books in between Genesis and Revelation. But I, I have been excited about beginning the year 2010 in this wonderful book. And I will say this, and I believe it's safe to say this. If there are two books that the devil really hates, and, and you can say the devil hates every book of the Bible, but if there are two books that he especially hates... At the top of his list would be the book of Genesis and the book of Revelation. He hates those books most of all, I believe, because Genesis shows how everything commenced. And the book of Revelation shows how everything concludes. And he doesn't want us to read these books. He doesn't want us to understand these books. Someone has pointed out that the devil is not found in the first two chapters of the book of Genesis... And he's not found in the last two books of or the last two chapters of Revelation. It's just not there. Uh, in Genesis, we see that the doom of the devil is announced. In the book of Revelation, we see that the doom of the devil is accomplished. And the more you study the book of Revelation, the more you understand why it is that he does not want us to understand this book. He does not want to, us to read or to understand any book that reveals the ultimate triumph of his number one enemy, Jesus Christ. And that's what the book of Revelation reveals to us. Uh, this book is not just the final book of the Bible. It is the fulfillment book of the Bible. In this book we find the fulfillment of the prophecies that our Lord has given to us about the future and, and what will be experienced in the future for the Christian and the non-Christian. The book of Revelation points to the future, unveils the future, unfolds the future so that we might understand the future. And the book of Revelation is given to us as, as you might imagine it as a time machine where we're able to travel into the days ahead and see exactly what this world is coming to. And so let me invite you this morning, if you haven't already, to open up your Bibles to the last book, the book of Revelation, and open to chapter 1. Uh, there will be times when I'll ask you to turn into a, another page of the book of Revelation, perhaps to look at another verse or another chapter. So have it open and keep it open before you. And if you're at home, I want to invite you as well to take your Bibles out. Find it now, quickly, get it and open it up to the book of Revelation so that you can join us in seeing God's word with your own eyes. Here in the beginning of our study, we look in Revelation chapter 1 and we want to uh, look at the first three verses. These first three verses give us keys that will unlock the door of understanding to this book. This morning in these, in these three verses, I will give you three keys that will help us understand what the book of Revelation is all about and will help us to uh, understand and comprehend the things that we will study. Many people view this book as a book that is difficult to understand or a book that cannot be understood. But I differ with that opinion. The book of Revelation can be understood and the book of Revelation should be understood because it shows us what the future holds for the Christian. And it shows us what the future holds for the non-Christian as well. And so we will seek in the days ahead to understand this book and study this book together. Look at the scripture in Revelation 1. Look at verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to the servant John who testifies to everything he saw, that is, the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it, because the time is near. In these verses, uh, we see the first key that's given. 
The first key to understand this book is the key of a person. <coughs> we see a person in this book, and we need to understand from the very beginning that the book of Revelation is about Jesus Christ. In most Bibles, when you look at the title of this book at the top of the page, it will say the Revelation of John. Not every Bible, but in most Bibles, the title is given the Revelation of John. But we need to be quick to understand that this book is not the Revelation of John. It is a revelation that was given through John. You look at verse 1, you see uh, that the Scripture says that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. What we find in this book is that it is a book about a person. It is an unveiling of a person. And we find here in the book of Revelation that it is the revelation of Christ. So it's, un it's important to understand that this book is more about, uh, more about Christ. It's not, it's not all about beasts and it's not all about horses and uh, horsemen and wars and trumpets and plagues. This book is about Jesus Christ. And, and you will never fully understand this book until you understand that this is a book about Him. It is a Him book. And as we read this book, we're to read it looking for Christ. Looking for Christ on every page. Uh, the, the name itself, Revelation, means an uncovering or an unveiling. And what we need to understand is that, that Revelation unveils Christ. It uncovers Christ, not only Christ, but also His prophecies. So this is the first key to the book, just to understand up front that this is a book written about Jesus Christ. Now, I want to, uh, what I want to do is to, convince, uh, uh, to condense what the book of Revelation reveals about Christ in, in two headings. I'm just going to sum it all up, this whole book. What does it reveal about Christ? The first thing that we will learn is that Revelation reveals His return this book talks about the second coming of Christ. It teaches the second coming of Christ and prophesies His return. Uh, Jesus told His disciples in a familiar passage in John chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus told His disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in Me. In My Father's house are many rooms, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me so that you may be with me. Jesus gave the promise to his disciples just before he died that he would come back and that he would come back for them. And so he's given us the promise. And then immediately after Jesus ascended into heaven, the angels said these words in Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Jesus promised that he would come back. Both the Old Testament and the New Testament prophesy of his second coming. In fact, the, the Bible is filled with the promises of his second coming. Uh, it has been uh, counted up by others that there are 1,845 references to the second coming of Christ in the Old Testament. That means that out of 39 Old Testament books, 17 books in the Old Testament give prominence to the second coming of Christ. And then in the New Testament, there are 260 chapters in the New Testament. These chapters contain 318 references to the second coming of Christ, or one out of every 30 verses in the New Testament makes reference to the second coming of Christ. In the New Testament, there are 27 books. 23 books in the New Testament give reference to the second coming of Christ. Only four books in the New Testament do not reference the co uh, second coming of Christ. That, uh, one is the book of Galatians. And then the other three are one chapter 
uh, letters that were written to individuals about a specific subject. And so we see throughout the Bible that prominence is given to prophecy concerning the second coming of Christ. Most telling is that for every one prophecy in the Bible concerning the Lord's first coming, there are eight prophecies in the Bible concerning the Lord's second coming. And so we see and understand as we study Scripture that the Lord has promised that He will come again. And He will. There will be a second coming of Christ. The Bible tells us so. The Bible promises so. God promises so. So here we see that Jesus Christ will come back for His people. You look at Paul's letter in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And it says there that Jesus will come down from heaven with a loud command. Well, when Jesus comes back, he will come back for us. And all those who are alive when Jesus Christ comes again will see him return, just as he ascended into heaven after his resurrection. And when that happens, the, the gravitational force of this earth will be released, and we will ascend in the twinkling of an eye to be with our Lord together in the clouds. The, Lord, uh, the Bible says that the Lord will come back for us. He will come back for His children, all those who believe in Him, all those who are saved. In Revelation, we not only see that the Lord comes back for us, but in a future study, we will see that the, the Lord will return with us as well. If you look back in the book of Revelation to Revelation 19, look at this verse real quickly. Just turn back to Revelation 19 toward the back of the chapter. Uh, back of the book. The scripture says in Revelation 19, 14, look at verse 14. It says, The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Now who are these armies that will return with Christ, riding on, on white horses, dressed in fine linen, white and clean? We'll see in, in a future study that that these armies are comprised of believers. These armies will be comprised of all those who have died as a Christian before he returns again. And, and there will be a day in heaven when the announcement is made, it's time for Christ to return. And on that day, all the saints will mount up on white horses, will be dressed in, in fine linen, and will return with him in glory. And so uh, we will return with him. Perhaps you've never ridden a horse in your life. But I promise you on this day, you'll be on the back of a white horse. And you'll return with Christ to reign with him in his supremacy. So we read the book of Revelation. We understand this one key. It is a book about him. And this book announces and testifies to the fact that he is coming back. It also tells us about the reign of Christ when he does return. If you are still in the back of the book of Revelation, look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. This verse talks about his reign of supremacy. And in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6 says this, Blessed and holy are those who have been part in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them. The second death there... Uh, referencing spiritual death. Our, our bodies die physically, the first death, but, but Christians never die spiritually. We immediately uh, are with Christ. So it says, The second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with Him for a thousand years. There is coming not only a day when the Lord will return, but there is also coming a day when the Lord will reign, that He will be supreme. And the scripture says that we will reign with him as well. 